Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing uh, okay. Uh, sorry there was no video last night. My daughter had a quarterfinal soccer game, which they won onto the semis. Uh, so there was no video. So instead, usually I take Thursdays off, but um, I didn't record one yesterday, so I'm doing one today. So where do we begin, right? Um, it, it, this is definitely a tale of uh, two markets. And what I mean by that is... The old world, um, old school brick and mortar, or just, you know, companies have been around for 5,000 years. Uh, the Dow stocks, the S&P stocks that are actually performing uh, very, very well. And if you look at the scoreboard today, uh, you'll see that the Dow is up about 200 points. And if you just look at the diamonds, and we'll use the diamonds as, um, as kind of a barometer, um, the Dow has been a kind of on a, on a runaway train here for the last... You know for the last three weeks or so right a really really uh big move and when you look at the dow today again up at 200 points you can see where the power came in right caterpillar uh had very very strong earnings you had honeywell uh very very strong earnings even sympathy plays even names like boeing who missed their uh they missed their earnings again you know big big sympathy plays you know up six dollars and so forth and so on um, and you, you could clearly ask, and if you ask two people what the market did today, it all depends what you trade, it all depends what, you, what your focus is, but you're gonna turn around and say the market was up today. Or if you are on the other side of the equation, which is technology, you kind of know the difference. And so, you know, it's very, very tough for me to enlighten anybody <laughs> who's trading the technology sector, uh, especially in the last uh, few days. Uh, you had Google, uh, and Microsoft reported a couple of days ago, they got slammed. Very, very aggressive. Google, and we'll get to individual pivots in a second. Really, really good uh, second day move today. Same thing with Microsoft, right? Same thing with Microsoft, really big move down. Uh, last night you had uh, Meta, right? Meta report, um, you know, wasn't pretty as well. Meta got absolutely uh, destroyed, uh, just like with everything else. And the question we kept on reiterating the point was because again the bulls were fighting back if, if you actually look at uh the intraday tape today okay on on the cues you'll notice the cues actually went green in the day at one point today before uh all chaos uh kind of went went nutty and the question we kept on asking was well in the last few videos well how long can the market you know how long can the market uh, you know absorb all these body blows absorb uh all these haymakers and and you know we talked about it you know, today in the webinar before earnings came out. And I said, you know, this is probably going to be, I don't want to use the word make it or break it, but I, I thought tonight's uh, action was going to be very, very important to kind of the state of technology going in uh, for the rest of the fourth quarter. And what we saw here, you know, back to back days is as strong as the market was, we did get rejected back to back days on this 284 move that we had a great, great move up to the 8284, but back to back days, 284 in the market kind of started uh, backing down again. And I'll give you guys a, a level here to watch uh, for tomorrow. The cues are still above that level for a macro, uh, kind of for a macro look. But the question was, well, were, were these stocks that were reporting tonight, right? And, we, and you know who the numbers were. You have Apple tonight, uh, you had Amazon tonight, uh, and you had Intel tonight, right? Those were, you know, very, very important areas, not only just for the NASDAQ 100, but it's a crossover, right? And that, you know, Apple is in the S&P, Apple is in the NASDAQ 100, same thing uh, goes for uh, Intel. So my question was, you know, can the market digest another body blow? Like how many hits to the ribs, how many punches to, uh, to the side of the head can you take without actually going down? And when you look at the action tonight, pre-market, right? Uh, pre-market, it was pretty strong, right? You saw some really, really good moves. The GDP came out, they spiked up the market. Everything was flying, uh, you know, it was very, very strong. And then stock stopped, right? Stock stopped, and as you saw, kind of, you know, without me paint, you know, using a, a thousand different words, we went down, right? we went absolutely down. And the question is what happens next, right? And that's kind of a big deal. Uh, after the close, uh, you had, you know, a pretty significant body blow 
uh, in Amazon uh, before uh, before the close today. They were coming for they were coming for the one tens, uh, the one oh fives, the hundreds, uh, hundred weekly puts. Uh, for Apple today, they were coming for um, the 140s, the 135s. Um, so, the, you know, there, there was a lot of sentiment, right? There was a lot of sour sentiment. There, there wasn't a lot of, you know, a, there wasn't a lot of enthusiasm. That's the best way of saying into, into earnings on a lot of these names. And you could kind of see it play out uh, with institutional money. So when after the close... Uh, Amazon got, you know, you see where Amazon, Amazon's getting, you know, it's down like 20% uh, after the close. Uh, Apple initially went down like seven, eight bucks. Uh, nice little turnaround so far off the lows. You know, Amazon, uh, Apple went all the way down to 136. Uh, it actually almost went green uh, back in the day and now it's down uh, only a few dollars. The question is, can, you know, can Apple, let, let's just say for, for argument's sake tomorrow, right? Apple uh, turns around and goes green in the day. You know, is it going to, is it going to save tech? Right, because again, uh, more influential of the two names is definitely Apple over Amazon, just because of its um, uh, its weight on all these uh, indexes. So it's gonna be very, very important. But the overall picture, you know, it's not great, right? It's absolutely not great. And what what you see on the Dow is aggressive. The Dow is, and always always remember, the Dow Jones is only thirty stocks, right? So it's not as impressive as the S and P going up, like say, for example, two percent in one day. For the if, you know for the Dow to go up two percent, or you know for over two days, really not that big of a deal. But now we're getting to the point of we're getting getting into the fourth quarter, right? We know that every company is going to miss. It, it, it's not really a question. That, you know, there's not really a question of what company is gonna buck the trend and come out with really, really great earnings. So far, we haven't seen it. Even uh, in the case of Netflix, and Netflix had a really, uh, really great run, right? They weren't great earnings, they weren't phenomenal earnings. Shopify had a really nice day today, right? But it wasn't like bang out quarter. It wasn't like one of these, it's okay, the you know the, the consumer is back, everybody's spending money. So you know finishing up this quarter, and you still have a lot of names uh, still you know, for next week, uh, you still have Nvidia and you still have PayPal and you still have eBay and, and you know all these and Square and all these other companies. But you you have to assume, right? Aim at all these other semis. You have to assume you're going to get exactly the same song and dance. Uh, what we've been seeing with every company so far that's reported, you know, the whole thing: slowing, inflation, supply chain issues, inflation, and blah, high interest, right? The whole song and dance. And the question is, where are we going? Right? Where are we going? How fast are we going to go there? And what do we uh, expect for the fourth quarter? And the answer to that is nobody has any clue. And I've been kind of reiterating that point uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But the point, what we can do is, right, what we can control is what we have on the close, right? What we have on the close. And, and, and granted, a lot of stocks are gapping down, right? It, it's not just uh, Amazon's taking tagging down. Amazon's taking down everything with it, right? If you look, for example, like a snow, right? Uh, for example, like a snow, snow is getting killed. Like every, everything is getting killed. There's nothing that's safe. Nothing that has anything to do with Amazon is getting absolutely murdered, right? Everything, you know, nothing to do with Apple, at least initially, is getting murdered. So it's 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 like a tribe, right? One one goes, they all go. So it's not a question of I don't understand why my stock is going down. Just get it. That's that's what it is, right? The whole tribe is 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 getting. Uh, uh, the double-fisted uh, situation here before the weekend, you know, if that's your thing. So look, here are the big levels, right? Here's absolutely the big levels. Uh, when you look at the cues, you have a couple of levels that we have to watch for tomorrow. Number one, this whole channel here. You see this whole bottom channel here that started on October the 17th here, right? The low here is this 266.74 ever. You see it? 266.74 stopped here. 266.82 stopped here. So it in all intents and purposes, without splitting hairs, it stopped twice, right, at 266.74. If right now the Qs are trading, where are they trading right now? 269s, right? 269s uh, after hours. We have to watch this 266.70s level. It doesn't necessarily even translate tomorrow. Is it possible in the middle of the morning they have some sort of dead cat bounce? Absolutely, everything's possible. Not, nothing is just gonna go straight down. Uh, even, even Meta today had this the worst quarter ever in the history of the world. Uh, and, you know, 
it, it, it did at some point bounce a little bit before getting shelled uh, towards the end of the day. So it's very possible we get some sort of relief bounce at some point tomorrow. It could last 15 minutes. It could last for three hours. We don't know, but you, you have to assume one is coming. The question is what happens after. And as long as we're going to use this barometer here, right? We're going to use this barometer here, the 66, 77, 74 level. This is the difference between the next leg down or holding this whole range here. And if we do have the next leg down, again, it doesn't necessarily have to even mean tomorrow. But again, if that is the case, then yeah, any close below that 67, 74 area has all the way lows to the CPI lows of 254. And I know it seems rough. And, and again, if you're an investor, again, I can't sugarcoat it. It is rough. That's the whole point. If you are, there's a big difference between an investor, you know, me going to sleep tonight, you know, trading both sides of the market for tomorrow, it's not really that big of a deal. It's like, an, you know, and, you know, business as usual. For if you are an investor in Amazon and this one, that one, so forth, you know, again, I, I wish I can give you a better, uh, a better scenario. I wish I could give you, you know, shine the light on what I think has happened. But again, I'm irrelevant. That's the whole point. I'm irrelevant. Anybody that you think you follow that has the end, nobody has the answers right now. Tech is in a train wreck. That's the that's the bottom line. Uh, you know, you have consumer cyclicals are very very strong. Uh, even banks and, and brokers continue to be very very strong. That's where the money is, right? That's where uh, the flight to safety is. Even names, you know, like McDonald's. I mean, look at the run McDonald's have. Look look at the names, for example, like Coke. Look at the runs they have. Again, it's a completely different world. It's the Montagues versus what do they call the Capulets, right? Romeo and Juliet, right? It's a completely different world. It's two separate markets. And the question is, what market are you trading? Now, again, what market are you comfortable in trading? I would rather always trade technology than any of these, uh, any of these consumer cyclical names, just because that's my sweet spot. That's my little niche. Uh, but there is a bull market somewhere, right? There is a bull market and is definitely in this consumer cyclicals. But if you are looking at, uh, if you are looking at, um, the text by Stace, yeah, I mean, we, you know, that 266.74 level on the queues is going to be super duper important in the next few days. And the most important part is once that level gets confirmed, you know, there's at least eight to 10 points uh, back to the downside. But again, there is, it's not all bleak, right? There are some names that look good, like shop, uh, you know, only down a dollar after the close, considering it's basically the same group as Amazon. And they had a great, great well, they had a great move off the quarter. I can't say they have a great quarter. They have a great move off the quarter. So, hey, if there's any type of rally tomorrow and this thing starts taking out today's ranges, who knows? Maybe there is a couple more bucks in this thing. A name like Roblox, for example, that had a really, really big, strong two-day move, right? Uh, had some $50 calls short-term. Granted, it's probably into earnings. But, you know, this thing's held up uh, very, very well as well. But on the flip side, you know, on the flip side, you know, I'm not watching them, right? I'm not watching them. I'm watching the names that they lost money on earnings, right? Microsoft, Microsoft still has room to the bottom channel. Meta, you know Meta is gonna get a day two move down tomorrow. You know Google is gonna to continue to go down tomorrow because there's no catalyst left. The earnings are bad, the market's bad, the sentiment's bad, everything's bad. So if everything's bad, why try to pick a bottom? Just go with the flow and start looking at more downside ranges. Again, can everything marvelously uh, turn around tomorrow and just go green? Of course. Right. But again, like I say in every single video, no matter what your bias is, or at least opinion for that day, don't you at least have to be ready? Aren't you supposed to be prepared for the trading session? Right. So again, it's OK to be wrong, but hey, at least be prepared on both sides of the market to kind of figure out which way the wind is blowing. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of it for the macro view of it. Uh, very strong day today. I mean, really, really strong day today. Uh, we had continuation of sell offs from uh, from earnings on Microsoft. Uh, nice, you know, nice move on Tesla. Again, there's a lot of speculation that Twitter uh, Twitter uh, acquisition is going to be done tomorrow. Who knows? Who the hell knows? Again, this is all banter. I have no idea. So let's talk about this. Tesla 231 needs to build. Here was Tesla. Not a big move. And I was a little bit upset of the move. Uh, it took out this 231 channel, went up about three, three, you know, like three points or so. Uh, and then it kind of stalled out, right? And, you know, once you start seeing, at least for me, and again, I have no, I have no grudges. I have no beef with the retail public. But once, you know, everybody's talking about and talking about the same thing at the same time. Tesla's going to 300. Tesla's going to 300. Look, the deal's going to get closed. Tesla, and it's like, oh, okay. So I kind of backed away from there. But a nice little pop. 
on Tesla. NVIDIA went pre-market, couldn't get NVIDIA, went from 134 to like 137. Google was pretty solid. Google, 94 for builds below can flush. That was day two uh, after earnings. Here was Google. So it took out this 94 area, traded all the way down to like 92 and change before the bounce, before pretty much ending uh, at the lows. Really nice move on Google. Uh, Microsoft was sweet, really, really sweet move. 230 for builds below can flush more. Here was Microsoft, right? Here was Microsoft. Microsoft went all the way down to like 226 and change before the initial bounce. Really, really nice move. I still obviously still like both st uh, stocks lower. Uh, Shopify, I miss Shopify. Well, I didn't miss Shopify. I, I was shorting Google and, and, and uh, uh, Google and Microsoft. Shopify was a really nice move. Congratulations for you guys who caught it. Uh, 31 rejected twice so far pre-market needs to confirm. Shopify went nuts today. Congratulations for you guys. Uh, who caught Shopify, uh, went all the way up to uh, 3460s. Really nice move on Shopify. Uh, pretty aggressive day today. Amazon was pretty good as well. Obviously, before uh, earnings, 130.20 has held twice. Earnings after tonight, if it builds below, it can flush. As you can imagine, it flushes. And here's the whole point, guys. Um, this is when we talk about you don't need to fall in love with stocks, right? Just fall in love with ranges. You know, here's my comments for all you players that are trading Amazon after the close. Upside, it's a little too tough. I, I couldn't find a channel to the upside, but the downside channels are 110, 105. If you look at Amazon right now, it's trading at 91, $92, got murdered. Uh, Apple for earnings players, 150, 152 to the upside, 142, 140 to the downside. Initial move on Apple was down to 136. So again, guys, you don't need to, if you're an investor, again, my heart goes out to you because again, it's very, very tough uh, to have, uh, you know, to have an opinion to what I think is going to happen in your portfolio in the future. Unfortunately, I just don't have them. I'm not smart enough for that. Uh, neither is anybody. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is if you do have uh, exposure to technology and you feel uneased, short some cues against your portfolio. That's the, the, the only, at least it's going to at least is going to curb some of the, you know, some of the damage because at least if everything's going down, you're going to have a, you're going to have some hedges uh, on the downside as well. So guys, have a great day. We should have some pretty good opportunities tomorrow. It's the end of the week. I wish you guys all the best and with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.